you made it part two congratulations so so in this tutorial we're just going to be kind of uh taking a little closer look at, at the the kind of intricacies that are going on here uh and then cover a, a few more things that we didn't talk about in the in the previous tutorial so again uh, i'm going to start with a clean slate just because we don't have a lot of code anyway so it's not a big deal um but uh, everything's pretty much going to start with package main um, and then we get to the imports. Now, in the case of the previous tutorial, we just had format. Um, but if you wanted, and in most cases, you're not going to write a program that has a single import. That's just not likely. Um, so you could, you could import other things uh, this way. So math is another package that's part of your standard library. Um, but this is not really the method that you should use. So instead what you're going to do is you're going to import and then you're going to import in uh, parentheses. And then you'll just kind of um, add everything in here that you're going to wind up using. So math. Uh, the other thing I, I, I think um, Go has, Go does have like a styles document. Um, but I, it doesn't appear to me that the Go community is as... Um, uh, pushy about styles. Um, obviously, there's some things like tabs and stuff like that that they want you to, to, to do and like indenting and stuff like that that, that something like Sublime is just going to do for you. Um, but anyways, I just thought about that as I, as I tabbed over math to be in line with format. Um, there are rules somewhere. I'll link to them at some point in the, in the text-based tutorial, but you could probably find them as well. But things like how many spaces, like you should probably have like an empty line between package and import and then at least like one white space between functions, stuff like that. Um, I kind of like to have two white spaces. I honestly don't know what the, the rule is and I'm not really sure the community has, has fully decided on that. But anyway, sorry if I, if I make somebody angry here. Um, anyways, that's how you would import multiple packages. Now, um, the next thing is... Uh, let's do let's go ahead and use something from math because as you saw before we we did um, Well, let's go ahead and just start with func main um, And so so before we had format print ln and then we printed something right um, and we're gonna go ahead and continue doing that but we could also um, We could say something like let's do the square root of 4 is and then comma math.sqrt and then four, we'll pass that through. Now, something you might notice um, is the usage of casing. So um, it's not by mistake. So capital P and capital S here. In Go, the ca if the first letter is capitalized, that function will be exported by Go and or that element for that matter. So if you do not capitalize that first letter, um, it's considered to be kind of like an internal uh, thing. Whereas, so like if you're using a package, you can rest assured that all the functions that you're using from that package will start with a capital letter. Uh, if they didn't, I don't, I just, it can't exist. So, 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 so just, just know that and get used to using that kind of capital letter there. Um, so that's another thing to think about. Now, the next thing is like, if you're coming from Python, um, this main function, like we never call, you know, we never said, hey, main, run. Uh, uh, what happens in Go is the main function is considered your your main loop, so to speak. It will always run. It's like the init method in a class or something like that in Python. Anyways. Um, it, it's just always going to run. So whatever you pass through here will run. So, for example, if you did, you know, func foo. And then, um, you know, I don't know, put some, well, we're going to put this in here. So we'll just cut paste. Um, and we save that. If we actually go to run that, I'll bring over the command line here. Uh, go run go tut dot go. Uh, we see nothing actually happens. Um, be, because the only thing that, it's not like all your functions run. It's just the main function will run. So now we could pass foo in here and run that again. And then now you see, yes, the square root of four is two. Okay. So um, so there's that. Now also sometimes you'll have like packages inside of packages. Um, also, let me fix this. So, so in this case, you've got, um, you know, format, math, and then like, let's say for example, we wanted to import, um, so like, uh, square root is, 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 is a function that's just right in the math package, but then there's also 
kind of sub packages in math. One of those is random, so RND. So uh, if so, like in Python, it would be a dot notation. But in the for the imports, it's going to be slash, and you wouldn't be able to say like down here math slash rand slash whatever you're planning to use or dot whatever you're planning to use. Uh, and you also couldn't do math.rand like that. That's not going to work. You have to actually, you'll have to import the packages in full up here all the way to the point where you're going to use that actual function. So, uh, so math slash rand. And then now what we can actually do is, is let's go ahead and I'm going to get rid of the foo function. We don't really need that anymore. Uh, and then I'm just going to say format dot capital P print line. And then what we can say is something like uh, a number from one to a hundred, and then we'll just say rand dot uh, capital I and T N, and then one hundred. So this will just generate a random number um, up to a hundred. And uh, we'll come over here and go. Actually, we just use it up here. Oh, we didn't save it. Gonna save that first. Try again. There we go. Number one to a hundred is eighty-one, and in fact, um, that might actually be zero to a hundred. I'll have to confirm that, but that's most likely actually, or maybe even better put, it's probably zero to ninety-nine. I'm not one hundred percent on that one. Somebody can comment below if you actually know the answer to that. Uh, the int n. We could look it up as well um, and figure out exactly how that's working. Um, and in fact, let, let's just show an example of that while we're here. So if you want to know more about a function or a package for that matter, or anything you want to know more about, um, you can use Godoc. So for example, we could say Godoc from the format package, we want to learn more about uh, print line. So print ln. We'll hit enter there. And then this just kind of tells us a, a little bit more about what we're doing. So it tells us, okay, here's the function. It takes a interface and then you've got, you know, just all your information basically. And it tells you a little bit more about uh, how it actually works, what it returns, all of that. So for that matter, we could also do the same thing with int n. Uh, I'm not positive this will be good enough for us, but we'll see, we'll see what it says. Go doc, um, what was it? Math slash rand and then int n. Um, and so basically int n, int n returns, yeah, do random number in zero n. So I'm going to assume that's zero to the number. So I don't think you would ever actually be a 100, but anyway, um, some, like I said, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with go, um, it's, it's a more true, uh, or it's a more honest rand random than Python's random. So if you if we run this again, um, I don't even remember what the first one was. Oh, it was, it was 81. So we can keep running this, and it's always going to be 81. If if you don't want it to be 81, you have to you have to uh, specify the, the the random seed and all of that. Uh, in Python, you don't as necessarily need to do that. But if you don't do that in Python, you will notice. Um, patterns in in the in the output of Python, but if you don't pay close attention to the output of random, you might be under the impression that yes, it's pseudo random, but it's still good enough random for doing a lot of things. Um, but actually, even in Python, it's really not. And I'm sure a lot of other languages are the same if they don't make you do anything with the seed. But Go is going to be truly honest with you and say, okay, it's always 81 until you you change the seed. <laughs> so so that's pretty useful. Um, Anyway, so, so that's all for now. Um, just a few more things I wanted to cover before we actually start getting into the, the true grunt work of uh, what's going on in Go. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.